We have eliminated 100 teams, 600 remain, and only one will win the FIFA 23 Global Imperialism Challenge. Welcome to part two. Helsinki, the biggest move is in terms of the global map, but I imagine some teams might claim their nations today. First cab off the rank in part number two is going to be Cardiff City. They're gonna be heading southwest, which means Cardiff City are gonna begin the episode in fine fashion, getting themselves an upgrade. Five players are 70 rated on this team, but the wheel has decided Callum Robinson will be the one getting the upgrade. He's gonna find himself going from a 70 to a 72. Heading to Ireland, Sligo Rovers, Sligo Rovers. They can legit only get an upgrade, but they're gonna be heading northeast. They're touching the border now with North Northern Ireland, meaning Pinnaker is now headed up to a 67. Come on guys, I want an actual game. Who is it going to be? It is going to be Cheltenham Town. Cheltenham Town will be heading east, meaning they're gonna be taking on Oxford United. What a star-studded clash to begin the episode. God, you'd hate to be watching this video only for your team to get eliminated as first team in an episode. We're gonna have to wait another game to find out who it's gonna be. Second leg, Cheltenham as the home team. Who is going to survive. It is going to be Oxford United in the 82nd minute. I'm sure Rich Lee is very happy seeing that. So the center defensive midfielder, Raya, will be headed to Oxford United. Sorry, Cheltenham. It's been nice knowing you, lads. Ah, Firth, Germany. Okay, we're heading back to Germany. Heading to Germany for the Firth time. Ha 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 ha. But they're going to be heading north, no, south. Oh, we're going to have to get the wheel out here. So according to the wheel, they're not heading directly south. They're heading like sort of south, like in between south South and Southwest, so we're gonna follow it there. And I think that's gonna be just, it's gonna be Augsburg. Augsburg, they've already progressed once in this video. Are they gonna progress again? They're defending home court advantage against Firth and they are going to win this one, one nil. Crazy how Augsburg have won twice in this video in this series so far and they get to get a player they can really use. Looking like a bit of a curse so far in part two to be the team challenging. Will Alaves break that curse? Alaves will be heading northeast. I mean, if we're going from the arrow, it means they should be taking on Bilbao, but if you're going from the middle of the area, they should be taking on Saucier Dad. I've got to stay true to what I've been doing and that's from the arrow, so we're going Bilbao. Also, whoever wins this game will claim the upgraded land here because I did make a rule in the last videos that if you already have a section cornered, you have to win one game before you can get the upgrade rather than getting the automatic upgrade from the beginning. A lot on the line for both these sides. Athletic Bilbao with already one win to their name. Can Alves get themselves an upgrade and a couple of big name additions. Let's find out. Yes, they do. Oh my God. This Jason guy getting them a goal. They have won 3-1 despite being somewhat dominated. That is massive. So not only will Alaves get themselves Munyan here, an 84 rated player, they're also gonna get themselves the center half Arbilla who Athletic Bilbao claimed from that previous win. They're also gonna claim this land here, meaning they're gonna get themselves an upgrade. So their 75 rated left back and club captain Duarte is gonna go up to a 77. Sampdoria heading to Italy for the first time today. Sampdoria are gonna be heading northwest, which I think means they're gonna be facing whoever is here. Or is it Torino? That's gonna be, oh yeah, it's gonna be this little corner here. So I think that's France. Yeah, it'll be this little corner here. I think they'll be versus Monaco or Nice, to be honest. Yeah, that's gonna be Marseille because they're touching around there. Marseille trying to get themselves into Italy and Sampdoria trying to get themselves into France. Marseille with already two wins to their name. They got Ben Yedda last time out when they took down Monaco. Are they gonna get another scalp here or will Sampdoria ruin the party? Go to second leg. So here we go, the return leg in Italy. No, I didn't mean to press that button. All right, jump to result. And it's a 3-1 win for Sampdoria. Marseille's reign is over. So that's gonna see Ben Yedda to Sampdoria. Malinowski to Sampdoria. And where is that guy? Sayers Lamange to Sampdoria as well. There we go, Sampdoria getting that little corner and they're getting the part of the Bastia Island. Wow. 
France are getting taken over, to be honest. They've already got Barcelona in there. Now they've got Sampdoria. Union Berlin, our first time in Berlin today. There's only two options here. They're going to be either versing Hertha Berlin or Dresden. And I think it's going to be Dresden because they're heading north. Yep, Union Berlin will be taking on Dinamo Dresden. Noticing a bit of a theme in this part two where a lot of teams that have already had a go at games or at least got some upgrades are getting involved again which makes the stakes even that much more important. Brawl, of course, the goalkeeper for Dresden, upgraded to a 71. Is he going to be heading to Union Berlin? No, he's not. Dresden, stay alive and pick up an ugly 1-0 win. Third division, Dinamo Dresden, shocking German football and getting Becker, a 78-rated striker in the process. Are they a dark horse for global imperialism? Hertha Berlin, now completely surrounded by Dinamo Dresden. Troyes, we're headed to France. The side from the north of France are going to be heading southeast. I think that means, yeah, that's going to be Paris FC. Can Paris FC get another win next to their name against a league or an opposition in Troyes? The scoreline is a 2-1 win for Troyes, meaning Troyes are going to pick up Zadadka and they're also going to pick up Cabal. Hello, Helsinki. Hello, hello, hello. Helsinki are heading directly south. This could be really interesting. As we head to the world map, look how much space Helsinki already have. So if we're going from the logo, directly south is going to be right in here, which is going to be the top of China, which means, oh my God, Helsinki are going to get themselves an upgrade and they're going to enter China. This could be so random if Helsinki end up coming across and taking on the Chinese opposition. And that also means Hetimaj goes up to a 72. Shrewsbury, okay. Heading back to England and Shrewsbury, what direction are they going to be heading? It is going to be southeast, meaning they're going to get an upgrade as well. Shrewsbury getting an upgrade here. It's going to be their center midfielder and captain Lie going up to a 70. FSV Zwickau. Is that Swiss or is that German? They are German. They're like one of the bottom teams in the third division. They're like coming 18th in the Bundesliga 3 at the time of recording, but they're going to be heading northwest, meaning they're going to get themselves an upgrade. Okay, that's ex I mean, that's exactly what they need. They're not really in a position right now to be fighting anybody. If they can get a plus two upgrade, it's going to help them immensely. Yeah, their goalkeeper Brinkies is going to be going from a 67 to a 69. They need the upgrade. Bang! Staying in Germany, it's FC Cologne. A city that I have been to, really enjoyed my time there. They're going to be heading southwest, which means as we look to the map here of Germany, they're going to be going into enemy territory, foreign territory. I legit think that's the bottom of the Netherlands. Because if you look there, you've got VFL Bochum when the land kind of points out like that, which would be that point there. So as it curves in and points again, curves, ah, oh, and points again, that's Gladbach, is it? Yeah, because that's where that club is, and they're in Luxembourg. So it's got to be this section here, actually. It's got to be this section of Belgium, which I'm going to go on a limb and say that it's going to be Eupen. Eupen versus Cologne. Again, if I get this slightly wrong, if I'm not 100%, I don't care. Go kick rocks. I think telling people to kick rocks has become one of my favorite expressions lately. So here we go. The Billy Goats trying to invade Belgium and conquer Eupen. Can they defend home territory or will Cologne be successful? It's going to go to a second leg. Second leg is in Cologne. The Ryan Energy Stadium, a stadium I did visit when I was in Cologne. And it's going to be the place where they conquer Belgium. There we go. Throw that Cologne logo in there. We have our first German presence here in Belgium. There's a chance as well if Cologne like go southeast again and then go southeast again, they'll be what in like France or something? But Cologne are going to get the addition of Peters here. We just can't escape Germany, can we? The third division side Auer are heading south. East. Oh god, we're going international again. I think that's right there in the Czech Republic, which means there's only three clubs in the Czech Republic. We're going to give them the upgrade in this area here. Get that little bit of purple in there for our. They could be taking on Victoria Plisson. There's a real chance though, if they kept hitting in here, they could get some mad upgrades and claim the Czech Republic. The third division side will have their goalkeeper getting an upgrade. He's going from a 69 to a 71. And he's wearing tracksuits. I repeat, he's wearing tracksuits. Suits. God, I hope this guy becomes a stud. <laughs> okay, Bolton. Bolton are up. We're heading back to England. Bolton will be heading 
North, South, West. If we're going from the arrow, if we're going from the logo, then they're gonna be taking on Salford City. It's lower league and Manchester region. Greater Manchester battle here. Salford City defending against Bolton. Will Fogden be happy or will he go home crying? We're gonna have to wait. This is gonna be a second match day vlog. Just imagine Fogden like vlogging this. He's like, match day vlog, Bolton versus Salford. If we lose, I lose my home and it's owned by Salford City. Anyways, the game is gonna be another draw. They don't want Fogden to lose his home. Third leg, here we go. Bolton or Salford. The score line is Bolton. <laughs> Bolton win. But Bolton scores for Salford City. Sometimes you just can't make these things up. I almost want to send Bolton to Bolton for good measure, but it's going to be what? Tyrol. Okay, it's WSG Tyrol. The Austrian side will be heading northeast. All right, again, we're jumping into other countries. It's happening a lot today. So Tyrol have this stretch here. Oh God, I think they've got Bayern Munich. I think they've got Bayern Munich. Yeah, it's got to be Bayern Munich. Because look how that little dip comes into there. And that's that there. Tyrrell, one of the ballsiest moves in this series so far, trying to invade Southern Germany, trying to invade Bayern Munich. Will they survive or will Bayern Munich get themselves into Austria? The scoreline, oh, De Litt suspended for the second leg as well. Come on, Tyrrell, do what Leighton Orient did to Arsenal in part one. The scoreline. <laughs> Oh, I had hope there for a second. There's no point even doing the random wheel for this one because a 68 rated player is not going to help out Bayern Munich regardless. So now Bayern Munich are going to make their mark here in Austria. This could be real dangerous, lads. Real dangerous. FC Nantes, we're off to France again. The Europa League outfit will be heading northeast, which means they're going to be facing a side who have already got one win under their belts. FC Lorient. Two Ligue 1 sides enter, but only one will survive. Who is it going to be? It is going to be Lorient. Lorient continue their, su their success in this global imperialism. And the wheel has decided that Albin Lafont, the French goalkeeper, will be heading to FC Lorient. Wolves, okay, we've got a Premier League side here. Wolverhampton are up. First time we're seeing Wolves in this imperialism global edition. They're gonna be heading north, sort of west. Doesn't matter, they're gonna be versing Bolt Burton Albion. I almost said Bolton Albion. Burton Albion regardless. Genuinely not much for Wolverhampton and two gain out of this game, but everything to lose. Are Burton Albion gonna cause a huge upset? We're gonna find out in a second leg. A lot of draws today so far. Second leg at the Molyneux. Here we go. Oh my God, Burton Albion are hanging in there. Burton are hanging with the big dogs here. Can they get it done in the third leg? They do! Oh my God, Burton Albion, I stand up and I applaud you. You have taken down Wolverhampton in a massive upset. Oh my God. And it is gonna be Ruben Neves heading to Burton Albion, a sentence I never thought I'd be saying. I did not expect Burton Albion to be taking down Wolves here and claiming this land. Kaiserslautern, we're headed back to Germany. A very famous city for football. They're gonna be heading southwest, which means they're gonna be taking on Saarbrücken here. Cause it wasn't like that far southwest. It was kind of like in between west and southwest, which if we're going from the middle would be right there. Which also means Liechtenstein is up for grabs in this game. Of course, Saarbrücken's goalkeeper Bats got himself an upgrade to 72 when they invaded Lichtenstein. What is the result of this game going to be? Kaiserslautern taking on Saarbrücken and it's another draw. Second leg here in Kaiserslautern, the home team and Saarbrücken are going to win. Saarbrücken continue the run. Lichtenstein's finest getting it done. Oh, this is conflicting for them. They get a plus one upgrade but it's to the goalkeeper role. They get themselves a new goalkeeper, but they already had their best player as a goalkeeper. AC Adesio. Didn't need to go to the wheel for this one. There is only one team they can face, and that is going... Actually, they could face Barcelona if they get directly west. I'll take that back. If it's anything but directly west, then they're gonna be taking on Sampdoria. Yeah, they're heading south, which is Sampdoria. Sampdoria with the monster scalping of Monaco last time out. They've got Malinowski and Ben Yedda. 
in this starting 11. Will their run continue? Yes, it will. Ben Yedder stepping up and picking up a brace, which is going to see the left midfielder Belayi heading to Sampdoria. And they officially take control of this island. I assume it's the island of a JCO, but regardless, here we go. Next team up to bat is Borussia Dortmund. Borussia Dortmund, hello. Big boys, big boys, big boys. Dortmund are heading directly west, which I mean, probably should be Fortuna, but I've kind of screwed myself with this badge rule, haven't I? So if we go directly across from the middle here, it's like the bottom of Paderborn. Yeah, it's like the bottom of Paderborn, isn't it? Have Paderborn got what it takes to have a huge victory here? Of course, not only is Kobel on the line, but so is the right midfielder Diaby, who they picked up from Leverkusen. So... This could be massive, a game changer for Paderborn, but it is not going to be Dortmund get another territory. It's not going to change anything for Dortmund here, but for formality's sake, Schallenberg is off to Dortmund. Dalian Pro, we're headed back to China. Dalian Pro do have a win under their belt already in this video. Can they get another as they're heading north? North of their logo is going to be against Changchun Yatai. Dalian Pro did give themselves a huge boost when they got the left back Ding Haifang when they won their last game. Is he going to be staying at Dalian Pro or is he heading to Chang Shun? He is heading to Chang Shun, who win 1 0. So Ding Hai Feng is heading there and so is the goalkeeper, Wu Yan. Yo, the mascot on their logo is hype. This dude is hype. Look at his mustache, his handlebar mustache. This dude's my new favorite mascot. Heading back to Spain, it is Granada. I feel like we've stayed around a lot of the similar countries so far, but Granada are heading west, meaning they are gonna be facing Malaga. An all second division clash here in Spain. Who is going to emerge victorious on their first attempt? It is going to be Granada. That Uzuni guy getting them a brace. So Granada successfully imperializing Malaga and collecting this left midfielder Junior in the process. Fenerbahce, we're heading to Istanbul and they're going to be heading east, which means Fener are going to be taking on Umranyaspor. I'm definitely a little bit biased heading into this game. Fenerbahce are my favorite Turkish side. I'm not a diehard fan of them or anything, but one of my best mates from school, Boyd, is a diehard Turk, a diehard Fenerbahce fan. He was born in Turkey, lived there for a bit. I've got that Fenerbahce scarf in the corner there, thanks to him. And so I'm definitely, I've got a soft spot for them and hoping they can go deep in this global imperialism, which they are. They're going to survive by the skin of their teeth. So Fenerbahce win and get themselves a new striker, which they really don't need in the process. Stoke City, we've gone from a team that one of my best mates in high school supported in Fenerbahce to a team that one of my other best mates from high school supports in Stoke. Shout out Boyd and shout out Dom. Where are the Potters heading? Where are the Potters heading? The Potters are heading directly east, which means they're going to be taking on Derby County. Big test here for Stoke City. They need all the upgrades they can get now that they've lost big bad Harry Sutar. But will they survive or will the Rams get themselves back into it? No, it is Stoke City with the dub. And the wheel has decided it had five options, but it's going to be Knight heading to Stoke City, which I don't know if that does anything for them. Also, I should probably tell you guys, like I'm not just randomly choosing these players. Like I'm doing, I'm just, I'm not showing you the wheel because I don't want these videos to be 10 hours long. Selfishly, I would love to see Stoke City. Whoa, gonna have to do this one by hand, but I'd like to see Stoke City do well in this. We're going to be heading back to Poland for the first time today, but which direction will Lubin be attacking? They're going to be attacking to the north west, which means they're going to be getting themselves an upgrade only just. They've taken such a huge chunk of land though with that upgrade. The first upgrade in a hot minute, but they've got like, they've got a pretty mediocre team. And then out of nowhere, they've got this Diodus guy or Diodus guy who's going to be 76 rated from now on. Or oh, Ulsan Hyundai. I think this is the first time that we're heading to Korea in this entire series. Korea has been shown no love. So Ulsan Hyundai will be heading northeast, which means they're going to be taking on the Pohang Steelers. This is a big game in Korean football. Through my time watching the Asian Champions League, I've actually found the K-League to be just super, super vibey. It's a league that I think deserves more love around the world. But is it going to be Ulsan Hyundai or the Pohang Steelers? Ulsan! absolutely thumping Pohang here. And it will be the Australian Alex Grant, who is the man headed to Ulsan Hyundai. Going back to England, it's Preston North End. And Preston will be heading south, which means they will be taking on Rochdale. On paper, this is a game that Preston should be thumping Rochdale in, but let's see 
if Stranger Things can happen, we're gonna have to find out in the second leg. Second leg on the road. Here we go, Preston versus Rochdale and Preston do live up to our expectations and get the dub. It's not gonna do much for them at all, but Ebanks Landell is headed here to Preston. Next cab off the rank is going to be Stoke City again. Can Stoke City find themselves going on a bit of a run? They're going to be going Northwest, which is going to be Port Vale only just. Stoke City with another third division side in their way. They're going to have Knight join the starting 11. Here we go. Port Vale versus Stoke. It is going to be off to a second leg. Almost certain this one's going to be going to a third leg if history continues. History will not be continuing as Stoke City take down Port Vale. Harrison will be the man headed to Stoke. And Stoke now have their own little pocket over here. Fluminense, so we're off to Brazil. I don't think we've been off to South America for this entire video yet. And they're going to be heading north, which means Fluminense are going to be taking on this team here. I honestly don't know who they are. Sorry. But of course, because it is to Brazil, Brazilian sides, it means we have to watch the game. Here's to hoping it's a good one. Oh, big header and a big goal. That's terrible goalkeeping there. Fluminense have taken the lead. Oh, a chance for an equalizer and it's been found. America Monero tie this one up. Ball into the traffic. They're going to get the header and they're going to get the goal. It's four on one. That is some shocking defending there from Fluminense and America Monero take the lead. Fluminense in stoppage time. Can they send it to penalties? What a deflection slash block. And that is going to be full time. Fluminense eliminated and imperialized by America Monero. So it will be the 80 rated Santero headed to America Monero. Is this the Hungarian side? It is. I wondered when they were going to get involved. Are they going to imperialize another country? They're heading north. South, I should say. Sorry. Which means they're headed to Croatia. And I think with the arrow pointing that way, they're going to take this section here. Meaning Dinamo Zagreb is only one step away from taking potentially Hungary. Yeah, let's go and get Ferenc Svaros there into Croatia. And that now means their 75 rated goalkeeper goes up to a 77. Wolfsburger AC, we're off to Austria. And they're going to be heading directly north, which is going to make this an all Austrian affair here against Sturm Graz, who will emerge victorious in this Austrian affair. It is going to be Wolfsburger AC. Sturm Graz had the chance to equalize in the 84th minute, but bottled it. Meaning the 73 rated defensive midfielder, Goran Stankovic is headed to Wolfsburger. Al Hilal, I know that club very well. Western Sydney Wanderers 2014 Asian Champions League winners against Al Hilal. Might get me in trouble, but I've got to say, I'm not a huge fan of theirs. They're heading west and I hope they lose. So Al Hilal will be facing Abba Club. Would have been nice if they got to face Cristiano Ronaldo. Al Halal are one of the glamour clubs in Saudi football, but I am hoping that other club can pull off an upset here and get the job done. Come on, lads. Come on. God damn it. It's going to be Al Halal progressing. And it will be the striker Casado heading to Al Halal. FC Familicial. They are Portuguese. I've just butchered their pronunciation, but I know for a fact they're Portuguese. They're going to be heading northeast, meaning they're going to be facing Gil Vicente. There's going to be one less remaining Portuguese side in this video in about five seconds from now. Who is it going to be? Oh my. Gil Vicente are so much higher rated than Familicial, and they have just thumped them. They're gonna get themselves the striker, Navarro. That is a huge pickup for them. Off to Poland we go, one of the more famous clubs, Legia Warsaw. They're gonna be heading west, which means they're gonna be facing a team that has already got a win under their belt in Radomiak. I think Radomiak beat Krakow. Regardless, so they got that Wolski guy, so, Interested to see whether he can be an impact here and whether they can take down Legia Warsaw and get themselves another bit of territory. The scoreline is going to a second draw. A second leg, rather. And speaking of second legs, here we go. Off to see how it goes, and it's going to be Warsaw coming out as the winners. Meaning they're going to get Wolski, and they're also going to get the center half, Rossi. Oh, we're headed to South Africa for the first time. It's the Orlando Pirates. Like I said last episode, a South African team could really go on a run. They're going to be heading west, which means the Orlando Pirates are going to get themselves an upgrade. Whoa, there we go. There's the new land they've got. There we go. They get that land, but like, let's say they get north next time they come up. Like, that would see them enter, I assume, like, Botswana. 
Botswana, which would mean they would claim all of Botswana and they could just keep going. If they kept coming up, they could go north, north, north and just take all of Africa. But for now, it's just an upgrade, which is going to go to D. Hotto, their left winger. It's, I don't think we've gone to Scotland all episode long, but now we've got Ross County and Ross County are going to be heading southeast, which means they're going to have a match up here with St. Johnson, the north of Scotland up for grabs here. Who is surviving? Who is getting imperialized? It is Ross County who is going to be imperialized. And Ross County will be sending the attacking midfielder Danda to St. Johnson. That's a lot of land St. Johnson's just got their hand on. Okay, we're back to Poznan. We're back to the Polish League. Poznan will be heading northwest. Southwest. All right, so this is who they're attacking. Can they get more of the pie in terms of Poland? Two clubs with pretty sick badges, to be honest. It's Slask Roklaw versus Vata Poznan, who is kicking on. It's going to be Vata Poznan taking over more land here in Poland. Poland is quickly working towards becoming the first nation overtaken. They've had a lot of work lately. Never heard of this Leva striker, but he'll center forward, but he is headed off to Vata Poznan. Back to Scotland we go. It's time for Motherwell. Gone from no Scottish games to two in the space of a couple of minutes. They're going to be heading southeast, meaning Motherwell are going to get themselves an upgrade. So Motherwell's goalkeeper and captain Kelly is going to be going up to a 70 overall. Okay, we're staying in the UK, Nottingham Forest, and their first involvement in the series is going to be southeast. So as we come down the table here, Nottingham Forest in the middle, southeast is going to be Leicester City. Leicester City have been busy boys in this video so far. They've got that upgraded James Madison. They've got three new additions that are all on the reserves. Can they steal one from Nottingham Forest or will Nottingham Forest get a huge win? No, they can't. The 86 rated James Madison goes Oh, and I think the default team sheets have done Nottingham Forest dirty. They started Dean Henderson instead of Kalor Navas, but I'm not allowed to go in and change them unless it's with new upgraded players. And you know that Kalor Navas is definitely getting changed into Leicester's starting 11. We're staying in England. Shout out Pyface. It's time for Plymouth Argyle. And Plymouth Argyle will be heading west, which is going to be an upgrade for them. It was either going to be an upgrade or Exeter City, and they've got themselves an upgrade. It's going to be their goalkeeper, Cooper, going from a 71 to a 73. We are on a roll with Scottish and English teams. St. Mirren, here we go. St. Mirren will be going west, which means they're going to get themselves an upgrade. Since it was slightly lower, I'm going to give them this area here. Upgrades galore lately, and it's going to be totally... Tony Watt, friend of the channel, Tony Watt, going from 68 to a 70. Roma! We haven't been to Italy for a while. This is the biggest club I've actually had come up in a while, but it's going to be Jose Mourinho and AS Roma, which is going to send them north. It's like just off center from being north, slightly to the left, which is going to be Empoli because it goes up like that. AS Roma with their first test of the global imperialism. Do they have what it takes, though, to overtake Empoli? We hit that simulation button, and yes, they do. Paolo Dybala bagged himself a hattie. And it's going to send the goalkeeper, Vicario Vasario, headed to Roma. Wuhan, we're heading to Wuhan. And Wuhan will be heading north, which means Wuhan Three Towns, they have a pretty cool badge. They're going to be taking on Henan here. Wait, no, I actually lied. This is actually the actual Wuhan they wanted. I mean, they're going to be versing the same team, but it's not Wuhan Three Towns. It's just Wuhan FC. Okay, so Wuhan FC. Oh, I know who that striker is. That's the former Sydney FC striker, Adrian Me Mejewski, I have pronounced. I, I don't like that guy because he definitely hurt my team a couple of times, but it is going to be Hanan who are progressing. The thing about these Chinese Super League teams is every team seems to have like one or two okay players. So this 70 rated striker Brown Forbes is headed to Hanan. Hey, FC Cincinnati. It's my favorite MLS team. Let's go. Which direction are we headed? We are heading south. East, which means we're going to be getting an upgrade here, heading into the great state of West Virginia. I was really hoping that we were going to get ourselves a Hell is Real derby. It is going to be the great man, the magician himself, Luciana Acosta. I am a huge fan of this guy. Ever since I watched him start, like since I moved to Cincinnati and started going to their games, I've fallen in love with this dude. Legitimately a magician on the ball. It's like the ball is glued to his foot 
I, one of my favorite players in the planet right now. Okay, we're headed back to Spain. It's Almeria. And Almeria are going to be heading southwest, which means they're just going to link up here with Granada. A lot of land to gain here. Granada with one win under their belt. They're not going to be starting the left midfielder they picked up, though. Almeria in the top division. Can they get themselves a win on the board? Yes, they do in the 77th minute. So Granada have to give up Mayendo here to Almeria and also the left midfielder that they picked up when they took over land, Junior. Adana Demispor, we're headed to Turkey and Adama Demispor will be heading to the east. So they're heading east, which means they're gonna be taking on this team here, Gaziantep. Of course, this part of the country was heavily affected by the recent earthquakes. Sending my love out to everybody that watched from Turkey and Syria. All right, big game here. Who is going to get the dub? Who's going to move on and who's going to get taken over? It is going to be a huge win there. 4-1 for Adam, Adana Demispor. It is going to be the center half, Bakaran, heading here to Adana Demispor. Heading back to the Bundesliga, it is going to be Schalke. Where are you going, Schalke? You're going northeast, meaning they're only just going to scrape this section here. I think it's Osnabrück. They're going to be just scraping the tip of Osnabrück. You would assume Schalke are the overwhelming favorites, but given what we've seen so far, you just never know what's going to happen. Here we go. The scoreline is a win for Schalke. Normality restored a little bit. Nothing wilds to write home about though for Schalke. They get a 69 rated defensive midfielder. But lads, if you are enjoying this imperialism video so far, make sure you scorpion kick that subscribe button down below if you are not already. This series is taking so much time and so much effort, but your guys' support means a lot to me. Staying in Germany, it's Saarbrücken. and we're going to Germany and Liechtenstein. Saarbrücken are heading directly north, which means if we're going off the middle of the logo, is it? It's just going to be this corner here. SV Weisbaden. Bats has been dropped to the bench as they got themselves that upgraded goalkeeper here in Luther. Are they going to get another win on the board? It is going to be a 2-0 win for Saarbrücken. Their run continues. And it will be this striker, Prajin, heading here to Saarbrücken. Look at that. They've got Liechtenstein. They've got the bottom corner of Germany. And now they've just continued their push up towards the north. Toulouse. We're heading back to France. And Toulouse are going to be heading east. Which means they're going to be versing Barcelona. Oh. Can Barcelona continue their march through France? Or will Toulouse? stop the rot. The scoreline here at the Camp Nou is another win for Barcelona. Barcelona getting a 77 rated midfielder. The funny thing is they have gained so much land, but their best player they've picked up is Sergi Dardet, who's merely just a backup center midfield prospect for them, which is kind of nice if they're going on a run, like a big club like that. There we go. Barcelona have almost got the entirety of the south of France. Who is going to stop Barcelona? Okay, we're heading to Rotterdam. Sparta Rotterdam featured early in part one but they're back in action. So Sparta Rotterdam will be heading southwest, which is gonna be an upgrade for them because that is an unclaimed territory. The club that famously eliminated Ajax are gonna continue getting upgrades, which is going to go to their goalkeeper, Olige. Also, I told a few, but I don't know why I said it was Sparta Rotterdam that took out Ajax, that was AZ Alkmaar. Sorry, AZ, not trying to steal your time in the in the limelight or anything. Back to England we go. It's been a hot minute, but Tranmere Rovers getting their second bite at the cherry. And Tranmere will, Tranmere will be hitting southeast, which means they have a date with Crew Alexandra. A couple of cellar dwellers from League Two here. Phil Bardsley, though, joining this Tranmere Rovers side after they got an elimination earlier on. So... Who is going to survive? It's going to be Tranmere Rovers with another win under their belt. To be fair, this is the best way to go about it if you are a team like Tranmere. Just like keep getting, oh, I've got to go to the wheel, but keep getting players from like teams that are around your level, maybe a little bit better and just keep slowly improving your squad. But it is going to be an improvement at the center back role. McDonald is drawn by the wheel. Ronald McDonald. Nope, Rod McDonald. Okay, we're headed up to Scotland. It's Hibbs Northwest, which is going to be Motherwell. Hibbs with a win already under their belt in part one, but can they take down Motherwell? So here we go. Kelly got an upgrade and then Hibernian did pick up the upgraded Anderson. Still not good enough to make their bench though which Scottish side is going to be imperialized. It is going to be Hibernian with a 
Big win there over Motherwell. Meaning Kelly is now the new Hibs goalkeeper. That's the second upgraded player Hibs have taken off another team. They got the guy, the Anderson guy from Livingston and now the keeper from Motherwell. Bolton are back again. Who are Bolton going to be facing? They're going to be going north, almost northeast, which is going to be Preston. A, a weird shape of land they're going to get, whoever wins this. Again, two teams with a win under their belt, but which can join the two-time winners club, Preston or Bolton, it is a draw. I just love when I build a game up so much for it to be a draw. All right, here we go. Game number two, Bolton v Preston. It is a Bolton win. The League One side punching up and taking out championship opposition. That's going to do them real solid, which means Bolton are going to get themselves a brand new goalkeeper in Freddie Woodman. And they're also going to get Ebanks Landell, who was a recent transfer. Freddie Woodman is massive for them. Fair play. All right, we are headed back to the Austrian Bundesliga, Austria Vienne. And we do not need to go to the wheel because they are completely surrounded by Rapid Vienne. A Vienne derby here, of course, that Bergstahler up to a 74, the captain and striker. Who is going to win the Vienne derby and get a huge chunk of, oh my god, Bergstahler, despite getting the upgrade, is going to lose the game, miss the penalty there, and Rapid Vienne have been taken over. And that means Bergstahler is headed to Austria Vienne. Look at that, they go from being the little tiny speck here in Vienne to taking all of this territory. Gank are up to bat. Where are the Belgian club heading? The Belgian club are heading south west meaning they're going to be taking on ohl here a club that have already gained themselves a little bit of land of course leuven did get jan vertongen when they took out anderlecht in shocking style can they get another huge scalp under their belt the scoreline second leg's gonna be ahead of us again i've cursed us with hype all right second leg away in gank who is gonna be the winner it is gank that is massive for them because they're going to get Vertonghen and the highest rated original player. So there we go. Jan Vertonghen and Gonzalez headed to Gank. I can't wait till we're like into the final 50 or so teams and there's legitimately like 100 transactions every game. Oh, shit. Liverpool. Liverpool. Hello, Liverpool. Let's go. It's a huge club time. What direction are Liverpool heading? They are heading northwest. No, northeast. Meaning they're going to be taking on Wigan Athletic. We all know what happened in the UK imperialism video when these two faced off. If you didn't see that video, it wasn't pretty for Wigan. Come on, Wigan. Please, please do what you couldn't do before. Wigan Athletic versus Liverpool. Oh, no, it's just a one goal loss. Oh, I really thought they'd done it. Stephen Corker is just along to enjoy the ride here with Liverpool. Houston Dynamo. Okay, we're heading to the MLS again. Second time today. And the Houston Dynamo will be heading east, which is going to see them get an upgrade and take over Louisiana. I love how the MLS has only been upgrades so far. Regardless, though, it's going to be Hector Herrera, who goes from a 78 to an 80. Headed to Switzerland, FC St. Gallen. St. Gallen are going to be heading southeast, which means... Yeah, they touch this little bit of blue here. So they're going to be going into Italy. Actually, no, they're not. They're going to be going into Austria. And they'll be taking on Rheindorf Alatsch, trying to be the second team outside of Austria to enter. And this game's actually massive because if St. Gallen win, not only will they get that land, they'll also get two upgrades here because they have to win a game to get like this area activated. Or if this team, if Reinhoff or whatever their name is, can get a win, then they'll get the two upgrades, plus four for their best player. So much on the line here for two teams that have not played yet. Although I've got to say, FC St. Gallen's kit is so cool that I kind of want them to win, to be totally honest. And it is what happens. Gubel gets them a brace, and St. Gallen just took a huge step. So they're going to take this 68-rated striker here, and their 74-rated goalkeeper, Ziggy, is going to go from a 74 to a 76 to a 78. Between St. Gallen and Bayern Munich, this western part of Switzerland is getting, or Austria is getting taken 
care of. I think we're staying in Switzerland, Servet FC. So yeah, the club playing in Geneva, playing in the Swiss league. Let's see how they go. They're gonna be heading north east, which means, are they gonna, yeah, they're gonna scrape this yellow section here. They've got a big challenge against BSC Young Boys. BSC Young Boys are one of the teams to beat in the Swiss Super League. They have the upgraded 78 rated fast night. Is that Gail Clichy at left back there for Servette? And they got Mbabu, the form of the Fulham player. And we're gonna be going to a second leg. Servette so aren't as bad on paper as I thought they were gonna be. They got some names that I actually know, which is surprising, but the scoreline, oh, maybe I gave them too much credit. They had two defenders I know, and they still concede five goals in this second leg. Was it actually Gail Clichy? Yeah, it was, and it's obviously Kevin Mbabu, but it is going to be Stevanovic. Miroslav Stevanovic headed here to BSC Young Boys. That is. Again, it's a position they can't really use him in though. And that win is gonna mean it's another plus two for Fastnart, who they're, because BSC Young Boys have cornered this region. So Fastnart now goes from a 78 to an 80. I just checked my notes. He should have been an 80 for that game. I'm glad they won. Fastnart goes up from a 76 to an 82. He goes from an 80 to an 82 now. I did not realize. My bad, lads. We're headed off to Saudi Arabia again. It's Damak FC. And Damak are heading directly north, which means we get another opportunity to try eliminating Al Halal or another opportunity to make Al Halal stronger. Whoever wins will also get an upgrade because of this region here. All right, here we are at the famous King Fahid Stadium. Al Halal defending here. Damak trying to cause a massive upset. The scoreline is going to be a 3-1 win for Damak. Let's go. Yes. Come on, Al Halal, out of here. Yeah, love to see it, lads. The center defensive midfielder, Cellular, Cellular, not Igalo. Igalo would have been sick, but it's going to be Cellular headed to Damak. And so is the striker that we got, Casado, that Al Halal picked up originally. There we go, lads. Damak with all this area to their name, and they're going to get themselves a plus two upgrade as we take over this area as well, which is going to give their 74 rated Dutch midfielder, Adam Meyer, an upgrade to 76. Okay, MLS again. Minnesota United. Are we actually going to get a game in the MLS this time? Will Minnesota United head south into the US or north? They're going to go east, meaning it's another MLS club getting an upgrade. Oh my God, they're gonna head into Wisconsin. Making sure they, damn, I, I don't, they, they, they don't deserve Michigan. Michigan's, that's Michigan there. Let me make this line a little thicker. There we go. Minnesota United are gonna get themselves Wisconsin. And their attacking midfielder, Reynoso, is gonna go from a 79 to an 81. MLS team trying to get eliminated challenge, impossible. Shanghai Shenhua, one of the big hitters in Chinese football. They're gonna be heading Northwest, which is going to see them take on Shanghai Taishan. That was, I just sounded so bogan, oh my God. But this is the club that has Marouane Fellaini. That 77 rated upgraded Marouane Fellaini is up for grabs. Who's going to survive in this Chinese Super League game? It is gonna be Shangdong Taishan, Marouane Fellaini's team getting the dub. Handy little upgrade here as well. Basadagog, a 74 rated striker heading to Shandong. Cardiff City, okay, Cardiff City back in action. They're gonna be getting an upgrade regardless, but it just depends in what direction it is going to be northeast, which is gonna be this area here. And that's gonna send Callum Robinson up again from a 72 to a 74 this time. Norwich City, we're staying in the English divisions. I almost said the English Premier League, maybe next year. And Norwich will be heading south. I already know where they're for going now. They're going to be trying to imperialize Tottenham. This should be a good game. Tottenham hosting here at White Hart Lane. Norwich trying to imperialize them. Can Timu Puki pull off a massive upset? The scoreline no, they cannot. It is 3-1 to Tottenham. Timu Puki's done a Kevin Durant. Couldn't beat them, so he's joined them. And so is the Ipswich center midfielder, Morsi. Internacional, they are Argentinian. They're going to be heading southeast. Internacional are Brazilian. What am I talking about? They can't even go southeast. They're going to be going northwest, which is another land. Let's go check out what country they're going to try invading. Okay, so this is where they are here. It's going to be an Argentinian side. No, it's not. It's gonna be this area here. Internacional are gonna get themselves an upgrade, but they, they're gonna successfully enter Brazil. Or should I say they're successfully gonna enter 
Argentina, meaning their center half and captain Abra Abranez. Abra yeah, I'm going to say Abranez is going to go to an 82. I don't even know if this guy's a real life player. I'm pretty sure all of these guys are fake. Burnley, we've gone from beautiful Brazil to beautiful Burnley. All right, Bizer Burnley, I'm Burnley. All right, Burnley, where are you heading? You're heading northeast, which means Burnley are facing Michael Carrick's Middlesbrough. Two sides in red hot form in this championship season. This should be an absolute belter at the Riverside Stadium. Who is going to emerge victorious? It's going to be Middlesbrough. Fair play, Michael Carrick's lads have taken down Burnley and continued on their run. So it's gonna be Brownhill joining Middlesbrough. Okay, we're heading to the K-League. It's Incheon United. Incheon will be heading directly east, which is going to, oh, that's right in the middle. I was gonna say FC Seoul, but right in the middle is going to be against Suwon FC. All right, Suwon at home defending the oncoming Incheon. This looks like a very even matchup. Who? is going to survive in the K-League. We're going to have to wait another day. Imagine how long these videos would go for if I was just like, ah, a draw means that you both survive, nobody overtakes, and we go back to the board. This video would go for so long. Second game, Suwon are successful in defending their homeland. 74 rated Korean midfielder Sin Jin Ho is going to be heading off here to... Suwon FC. Oh shit, Tottenham are up again. They're gonna be going back into London, I think. It's Southwest. Yeah, so if we come down and we aim Southwest, I'm pretty sure that's Leighton Orient. Although, nah, because if I'm going from the center of the logo, it's gonna cut through there. So it would be Cambridge. To be totally honest though, I was kind of hoping it's Leighton Orient because I want Leighton Orient to take out Arsenal and Tottenham. But rules are rules. The good thing is though, this is another banana skin type game for Tottenham. They're favorites to win. They have nothing to gain from this. They're not going to gain anybody that's going to be crucial to their cause. But can they get themselves eliminated by Cambridge United? <laughs> no, they can't. 3-0. Back to Spain. It's been a hot minute, but we're off to Levante. And they're going to be heading southeast, which means they're just going to touch Elche here. They're just going to touch Elche. It's one of the highest rated second division sides versus one of the lowest rated top division sides. Who's going to emerge victorious, though? LJ or Levante again. I, whenever I, I gotta stop hyping these games up. Oh yeah, I could care less about this game. Yeah, I could care less. Yeah, couldn't couldn't care less. Oh my god, that doesn't work either. It feels more true to me when I hype these games up. So here we go. The LJ versus Levante game. Who's moving on? It's Levante. That's I gotta I gotta keep hyping these up. So Levante are about to get themselves a new goalkeeper, a 79 rated goalkeeper in that. Staying in Spain here, and we have drawn Mallorca. Now Mallorca is an interesting one because they are out on an island here. So just to give you guys an example, if they draw north, then they're gonna have the Villa, uh, Villarreal B team. Actually, let's just do the draw. Basically, the only way they can't go is south. They can't They can't go southeast. They can go northeast though, because that's gonna get them an upgrade on this little island here. Fair play, Mallorca, fair play. You're getting your right back up to an 80. Hellas Verona, it's been a while since we've been in Italy. Hellas Verona are headed southwest, which means they're gonna be taking on Cremonese, the second division team. I'm sorry. Criminace, I didn't mean to disrespect you like that. They're a Serie A club. Two top flight clubs going head to head. A great opportunity for one of them to get themselves off the mark and get a big pickup in the process. Second leg. All right, second leg, here we go. Hellas Verona without Duda, who's getting imperialized. It is going to be Hellas Verona getting imperialized. Cremonese, I disrespected them and they took that personally. And that is gonna see Darko Lazovic headed their way. Hello, Schalke. Schalke are going to be heading southeast. In a minute, but we're gonna get the symbol out for this one. This one's too close to tell. Yep, it's gonna be Borussia Dortmund's two side. It would actually be hilarious if Schalke lost to their rival's backup side. That would be, that would be a moment. That would, that's, that's one way to put it. It would be a moment. Unfortunately, that moment is not gonna happen. It's not gonna make much of a difference, but Schalke will be getting the center half dams. AZ Alkmaar, the team that eliminated Ajax back in the game. And they're going to be heading southeast, which means they're gonna be taking on FC Utrecht here. Of course, they did get Geronimo Rulli after taking down Ajax. This would be huge if they were eliminated by FC Utrecht of all sides. Here we go though. The Dutch league game is an absolute thumping. AZ Alkmaar defeat Ajax 
and then get their ass handed to them by FC Utrecht. So it's gonna be Geronimo Rulli, the Australian Matt Ryan, and where is he, the other guy they picked up, here he is, eating. All heading to FC Utrecht. Montreal, we're headed back to the MLS. Will this break the curse? Montreal will be heading west. Yes, come on. They're gonna be taking on Toronto in our first actual MLS game. Big game here, some big name players up for grabs. I mean, Insigne or Victor Wanyama, two big names. Who is gonna survive this all Canadian MLS clash? Toronto FC or Montreal, it is Toronto. By a landslide, one Yama headed to Toronto. Oh, West Ham, okay, here we go. Could West Ham get themselves drawn up against Tottenham? They're gonna be heading down south east. God, it's getting late in the night. Yeah, I mean, if we're going from the logo, then yeah, it's gonna be Charlton Athletic, not Tottenham. This is the type of game where I could just see Tottenham bottling it and Charlton Athletic getting the win. That would be quite funny. Not gonna lie, that that would be quite funny. I'm not speaking into fruition. Obviously, I'm not Charlton Athletic eliminated. It will be Fulham's former player, Michael Hector, heading to West Ham United. We're into Paraguay for the first time, I think, in this entire series. And they're gonna be heading directly east, which means it is an all Paraguay game here as they're gonna be taking on Club Libertad. Somebody please start a petition for EA to make it so that you can actually simulate games between South American clubs. That just seems like an obvious thing that should be in the game. Well, they're in early here. They're in early and it's going to be Libertad taking the lead six minutes into this Paraguay game. Oh my god, it's just been 2-0. This is a demolition job so far. No, that's embarrassing from them. That is embarrassing. They've been pickpocketed in their own box. Surely that's game. That was complete and utter domination from start to finish. And that's going to see the 75 rated goalkeeper, Gene, heading to Libertad. Bristol City, we've gone from Paraguay back to England. But Bristol City will be heading northeast, meaning they've got Forest Green in their sights. Do Forest Green have what it takes or will it be another win here for Bristol City? It is going to be a 1-0 win for Bristol City. 16th minute winner, but they, oh, I wouldn't say dominated. O'Keefe is going to be the latest player joining Bristol City. Oh, Andorra, hello. Why did I say it like that? Andorra, though, from the top of Spain, will be heading west, which means they're going to be getting themselves an upgrade. It could have been calamitous. They could have been playing Barcelona, but instead they're going to get another a territory and plus two. So FC Andorra's goalkeeper is going to be the beneficiary. I've got to say, I do like their their kits a lot. Austria Vienne back again. They're gonna be going northwest, which is gonna see them, I think, go into the Czech Republic. Yep, that's gonna be the Czech Republic. So Austria Vienne are gonna get themselves an upgrade by claiming this land here. They get to officially enter the Czech Republic and stamp themselves for a southern region. Meaning their 70 rated center half mule is gonna go up to a 72. Also, I do not know how I feel about those sponsors being right there. That That's not as Aesthetically pleasing. Headed back to Turkey, Trabs on Spore. And the team from the north of Turkey are gonna be heading north again. All right, I need to check this map because they're not gonna be able to verse anybody in Turkey. Yo, Trabs on Spore are about to get a whole country for themselves. Trabs on Spore are about to have the country of Georgia. That is massive. The nation of Georgia is now Trabs on Spore territory. If they go north again, they gonna, they're gonna get to take on Helsinki. Oh my God. And that upgrade means their highest rated player is a very well-known name, Mark Bartra, going up to an 83. We've got Arsenal here. It's not the Premier League one. We all know what happened to them. It's the Argentinian Arsenal. They're gonna be heading northwest, which is gonna see them taking on Cordoba. So it turns out the only two teams that in the Argentinian league that haven't been licensed to be put into FIFA yet are both the clubs that play out of uh, Cordoba. So I'm going to delete both Belgrano and Institucio or whatever they're called. This whole area is Cordoba. So I'm going to give it here to central Cordoba to play Arsenal. Nothing's ever simple when it comes to this game. So it's Tejerez of Cordoba taking on Arsenal of Buenos Aires. Who will survive? Can Arsenal get themselves out of Buenos Aires? No, they can't. Tejerez dominate Cordoba and enter Buenos Aires. Meaning the goalkeeper Medina is headed to Tejerez. We're heading to the nation's capital of America. It is DC United and Wayne Rooney. It can only be an upgrade for them, but it is going to be South 
east, meaning they're gonna take, I think this is Maryland here, because I think that's Virginia, and I think that's Maryland there. I mean, DC is basically Maryland, so it makes sense that they get that area. So Christian Benteke is not the highest rated player in the game, nor is Matthias Klitsch. It is this center forward, Funtas. He finds himself up to a 77. Sydney FC, Sydney FC, I hope this is a loss. What way are Sydney FC gonna be going? They're going to be going north, which I believe will be the Central Coast Mariners. Yes, it will be. And the winner of this game will be getting an upgrade when they claim Canberra. Here we go, playing up at the Central Coast, playing in Gosford, a beautiful away day. An away day I have done many a time as a Wanderer. Come on, Central Coast Mariners. Come on, come dog. Do it against Sydney FC. Yes! And Colo in the 86th minute. Come dog scores in the 27th. Sydney FC are out of here. So it is going to be Robert Mack headed here to the Mariners. And because of them gaining Canberra, the Australian Capital Territory, come dog. Jason Cummings goes from a 69 to a 71. Oh, this is going to be so satisfying to do. Look at that. Sydney FC get out of here. I love how I'm carrying on giving Sydney FC crap like my team Western Sydney didn't get eliminated straight up at the start of last episode. I also can't believe it took this long for an A-League team to come up. Heading back to, I believe, Italy. We've got Bari. And Bari are heading northwest, meaning they're gonna have Napoli. Oh, this is a huge test for them. Proper baptism of fire this for Bari. Of course, Oshaman is up to an 86 overall. If they pull this off, this would be monumental. Yeah, there's no real surprises there. They're eliminated to Napoli. And that's going to see Antonucci heading here to Napoli. Boca Juniors. Okay, headed back to Argentina. Boca Juniors heading north. Sorry, south. So they're actually going to have a big game here. They're going to be taking on Sarsfield. A Buenos Aires derby. I mean, I feel like all of Boca Juniors' first few games are going to be Buenos Aires derbies unless they get eliminated. Both teams with one win under their belt and both teams with one addition to their starting 11. McAllister in here for Sarsfield and it is going to be Marcone or Marcone in for Boca Juniors who will survive. Two of the heavyweights here in Buenos Aires and it's going to continue on to a second leg. That almost felt like a boxing hype intro and of course it had to be a draw. Second leg here at La Bomanera. Who survives? Who pushes on? It is going to be Boca Juniors. So Boca Juniors will be taking Diego Godin and McAllister in the process. That's now a huge chunk of Buenos Aires in Boca Juniors possession. LAFC, we're headed to the west coast of America and they're going to be heading directly north, which is gonna be the San Jose Quakes. It's the reigning MLS Cup champions, LAFC taking on the San Jose Earthquakes. This should be a win for LAFC, but who knows whether Will Ferrell's men can get it done. The scoreline, it is. It is a 3-1 win here for LAFC. The team from the City of Angels imperialize San Jose and take Acapo in the process. Oh, we're staying in the MLS. It is the Columbus Crew. Oh, they're just running from FCC. You're running scared, Columbus. They're going to be facing the Chicago Fire. I almost want Columbus to win this game so that with the Hell is Real Derby can still be a possibility. They have that 81 rated Zell Ryan in there though that got the upgrade. Who's going to emerge as the victorious side? It is going to go to a second leg. I mean, it really is a win-win for me. Either Columbus stay alive and we can have a Hell is Real Derby, potentially, or Columbus crew get eliminated and we can laugh at them. It's going to be Columbus crew staying alive. And it's going to be Zerdan Shakiri headed to Columbus. That is wild. I mean, uh, hopefully that means he's going to be heading to FC Cincinnati down the line. Although I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of worried that the Columbus crew might get too powerful here. Headed back to Germany after a brief period away, mines are up again. And mines are going to be heading west. And given their logos here, they're going to be heading west, which I believe means they're going to be venturing into Belgium. Yeah, so if we're saying that Saarbrücken there, then mines will probably be just about there. Yeah, so mines are going to get this free territory here because they're below Cologne. And that, so that would, it would have to be this region. So mines are officially the second German club to enter Belgian territory. Damn, Belgium's kind of copping it, man. They've got two German teams coming from their east, and then they've got Stade de Rams coming from the south. But their designated upgrade, man, is going to be Ludovic Adjork, who goes up to 80. Headed back to England, it's time for Blackpool. Blackpool are heading north. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, what a glamorous game. Blackpool versus Fleetwood Town. This is what gets the big bucks. To be fair, I seriously forgot Blackpool were a championship side. How are they doing in the championship? I hope they're doing well. I like, I like Blackpool. Regardless though, they're gonna get the win. See, I told you I like Blackpool. So it's gonna be the center half Earl headed to Blackpool. All right, we're staying in Germany. We've got Hamburg here. They're gonna be going to their east, which unfortunately isn't going to be the derby game against St. Paul that we all wanted. It is going to be against Holstein. So both clubs in the German second division. Of course, Hamburg, historically one of the most famous and celebrated clubs in German domestic football. Can they lift themselves up though as they take Holstein Kiel on here? No, they can't. Hamburg's disappointing recent history continues. They have been imperialized. And that is going to see the goalkeeper, Hua Fernandez, heading here to Holstein Kiel. I said Heidenheim, but he's heading to Holstein Kiel. Haven't been to China for a while, but here we go. Tianjin will be heading southwest, meaning they're gonna be facing Kangzhou here. Kangzhou versus Yinmen. The Lions versus the Tigers. The Lions versus the Tigers. I'm kind of hoping the Tigers win because their logo is just, I just love me a good logo. I just love something different. And that's gonna get them over the line. I'm telling you, it's the logo that got them over the line. Or should I say, Got them over the Lions. I'm gonna make such a good dad. So it is gonna be the center back Sunzu headed to Tianjin. Back to Scotland for the first time in a while. Dundee United, hello, hello, hello. Dund Dundee are heading directly south, which is gonna get them an upgrade. New area unlocked. If you watched our UK imperialism video, you would know Beige was the man that got the upgrade in that one. But we spun the wheel and this time they gave it to Stephen Fletcher. Bordeaux are next up, heading back to France, have they? I feel like they've claimed territory. Maybe I'm tripping. Now, nah, Bordeaux haven't, but like they haven't gone south. I feel like they might have gone into a different country, but they are on the cusp of going into Spain or maybe versus Barcelona. Let's go figure it out. Bordeaux are heading directly north, which is gonna be Chamor. They're gonna be versing League Two, second division Chamor. I love how I'm saying this like Bordeaux aren't in the second division them themselves. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I forgot they're in the second division, but here we go. Who's gonna come out? On top in this French clash, it is gonna be Bordeaux. Josh Mayer, former Sunderland guy, English striker, getting the winner. So it's gonna be the right midfielder, Boutoba, 71 rated, headed to Bordeaux. Okay, Orlando Pirates, this is exciting. They're up again. It's been a while, but this could be huge. Ah, oh, they're heading south. I really wanted them to go north. But it is gonna be another upgrade for them, meaning Hotto's gonna go from what? 73 to 75, now to a 77. NEC Niemegen, which is a Dutch club. They're going to be heading directly north, which is going to end up being, given the way I put their logo, like I probably should have put their logo in the middle to be honest, but it's happened for a reason. They're going to be facing FC Utrecht. Why did I put their logo in the corner to begin with? Because there's no space. I really should have had it there and they should be tasting, taking on Vitesse, but it is what it is. FC Utrecht have already shaken things up massively today. They've got goalkeepers galore, Ruli and Matt Ryan. Baz dozed up top. Are they gonna, although, <laughs> that's gonna be hilarious. If they win this, I'm pretty sure they're gonna get another goalkeeper in Jasper Sillison. Oh, this is gonna be hilarious. It's a draw. Whichever team wins this is gonna have an abundance of quality keepers. It's a second leg here because neither keeper can decide which team they wanna be playing on, but it is going to be FC Utrecht continuing their run. And yeah, pretty obvious. They're gonna be adding Jasper Sillison to their side. That's, oh, that's, how is Matt Ryan going to be third string on this team? But lads, that is where we are going to call it a conclusion to part two of our global imperialism challenge. Just over 500 teams remain, but some are really starting to step out and conquer the world. Make sure if you haven't already and you enjoyed the video, subscribe with notifications on. I'll see you in two days from now for part number three.